Our second lesson for this morning comes from Galatians chapters 5, verse 13 through 26. Listen for God's word to speak to you. For you were called to freedom, siblings. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves of one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit. I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh, for the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now, the works of the flesh are obvious. Fornication and impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I'm warning you, as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There's no law against such things, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, competing against one another, envying one another. The words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord God, thank you for this day and for your word, for your spirit at work in us, bearing good fruit. Fill us with your spirit that we may hear your word for us this day. Bless the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts. May they be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I want you to take a moment and think about who loved you into being. From whom did you learn love? Joy. Peace. Patience. Kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Who is that person who were those people that loved you into the person that you are today? For many of us, maybe even for most of us, one of the chief people that loved us into being were our mothers. I know that I learned quite a bit of all of those characteristics. 
from her example, my own mother. And perhaps you can say the same. But she was not alone in that job, certainly. There are many others who also shared in that. And so not only is my biological mother one who has taught me how to love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, etc. But other folks have loved me into being who I am, and I imagine have loved you into being who you are. For some of you, perhaps it's not your mother, and this is a challenging day. Or maybe your mother is no longer around. Maybe you never knew her. Yet I wager God has provided you with those important people, and let's face it, probably women who taught you how to do those things. Who loved you into the being person you are. Some of you, many of you in this room are mothers yourselves. Or maybe fathers and have watched mothers work. And you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that these things do not come easy. It's not all that natural, frankly, to our flesh to show that pure love, that patience, good Lord, that kindness and that goodness. There were probably times when you wanted to give up or you thought that you were doing such a poor job. That even though you tried and tried, it didn't quite work. That you worried over that one word, that one thing, that time when you were not patient or kind or loving. You think of those around you who maybe failed to teach you these things too. God is good. God provides for us examples of love and joy and peace and patience, etc. God fills in the gaps where we don't live up to our own expectations or the expectations of those around us. And with confidence, we can see that our children and the important children in our lives are learning these great lessons, who are bearing these fruits of the spirits because they pay attention when we show them. And they don't always pay attention when we're not. that over a long period of time, they learn that love, joy, peace, patience, etc. We know because we can look back in our own lives at those who have taught us these things. God shows us love, joy, peace, patience, and the rest. While in the New Testament, one of the predominant images that we have of God is as Father, throughout Scripture, we also have images of God as Mother. 
as a mother nursing her child, providing for everything. Jesus looked over Jerusalem and lamented how often I wanted to gather you under my wings like a hen, gathering her chicks. Or if you want to go really hardcore in Hosea, Hosea talks about God as the mother bear who rips apart the enemies, who defends and protects with no end. Our mother God loves us and cares for us and provides us with wonderful examples of love, joy, peace, etc. in our mothers sometimes and in those important women who are adoptive mothers who care for us. And so for to all of you who are mothers, thank you. Thank you for teaching love, joy, peace, patience, etc. Know that if you're not on the ball every day, every moment, God fills in the gaps. For those of you who teach others, who teach others love, joy, peace, patience, etc., who love others into being the people that they are, thank you. For those of you who never had biological children of your own, and yet love others into being, thank you. For those of you who love and raise children, even if you didn't have a great example of that, thank you. God gives us grace. God gives us love. God gives us mothers and important people in our lives to love us into the people we are now and continues to love us into being the people who we will be in the future. Thanks be to God. Amen.